Hello everybody, I have been joined in the studio by Az from Mythic Games and today we're talking about Super Fantasy Brawl! Man, you really have upped the game on the title. We're gonna, we're gonna have to get... <laughs> uh, actually, do you know what? I've got to say it right now. I've been looking at voice actors. Mm -hmm. I have been looking at voice actors for our trailer because we love trailers for oh, our yeah, games. Yeah. And I have been looking for someone who can embody the dark, the yeah. story, the narrative, but then also the epic and kind yeah. of transition that whole thing. I've had some fun. There's great... Like, there's, you, you can lose hours listening to voice actors. Oh yeah, well, I mean, like, there's... <laughs> What I would suggest for this is get someone that does like the the boxing arena and in the red corner. This is it. This is it. <laughs> tangent. Well, in <laughs> instant tangent. Um, yeah. So this. So I'm going to say this right now. So this right now, it's right at the start of May when yeah. we're filming this. It could be some time before you see this, but we couldn't come to be Savor and not show off what's happening. Yeah. This is one of my favorite parts of the job. Yeah. So this this is our first game. Sword Fancy Brawl is going to be our first game that we're going to take as kind of like a completely retail focused product. Mm -hmm. One that we want to launch at retail with a core set, mm -hmm. have regular release champions, so a new champion or sets of three champions that you can kind of increase your, your mm -hmm. um, options with. It's a faction free arena game, mm -hmm. super easy to get on board with. Yep. The rules are really basic. The world's really kind of easy to get your hand, get your head around. It's a super fantasy brawl. It's exactly what you expect. Mm -hmm. um, and we're basically putting a ton of development into this early. So mm -hmm. very different to our other Kickstarters where we kind of come along and say, okay, we've got this idea, we've got it fleshed out. We've got like 70% of it done, mm -hmm. but we want to develop it with you. You know, we want to yeah. take it through with our backers. We want to add new ideas. And this is something that we want to have you know, really perfect, balanced, really, you know, because for organized play, it needs to be really perfect and yeah. on point before we take it to, to launch. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, the last thing you want is there to be one power play build that everybody's going to run. Yeah. You're going to want everything to be viable. Absolutely correct. So for us, although things, I mean, at the moment do look kind of good with this, and this mm -hmm. is this is still, we've got months of us still to work on this mm -hmm. and really kind of make sure this is refined and feels fantastic yeah. for people who want to just play it for fun mm -hmm. and for those who really want to be hyper competitive. Yeah. 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 Um, so what is Sword of Fancy Brawl? What is the game? The game itself is an arena battler where you're going to be taking champions throughout all of fantasy stereotypes and genres, mm -hmm. bringing them together and bashing them in a brawl, which is basically like a kind of elimination and also kind of a tactical base maneuvering game where mm -hmm. you're trying to complete challenges and knock out your opponent's champions to get victory points to appease the crowd and win the game. Yes. Very simple. But the world itself is a little bit interesting, so I wanted to start a little bit with it. Go for it. So Super Fantasy Brawl is set in a planet in a realm called Fabulosa. Mm -hmm. And Fabulosa was essentially uh, this world that was plagued by war. So mm -hmm. basically we're talking generations and generations, millennia, millennia, just of eternal conflict. Mm -hmm. Essentially imagine Tolkien, but just never ending war. So elves, dwarves, trolls, ogres, all, all races. And we're, we're bringing a lot of our own different Tigarans. Mm -hmm. We're bringing our moon touch, a little spoiler there, uh, for a bunch of, we're creating a bunch of our own races as well to kind of tweak with those kind of typical fantasy um, kind of uh, tropes that you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in Fabulosa, this, it was never ending war, mm -hmm. never ending. Magic, war, violence in all its forms was just normal everyday life. And then the wizards arrived and the wizards were able to take what we see in the logo, which we, we show here, we show three schools of magic with mm -hmm. yellow creation, blue manipulation and red destruction. And they united the three schools of magic, the cores of magic, and were able to create true magic. Mm -hmm. And true magic basically meant that if you needed anything, you had it. The wizards could produce it en masse. Mm -hmm. If there was a dispute over land, boof, there's a whole new continent for you. Yeah. If you needed shelter, boof, there's a thousand high homes for your people to live in. If you needed food, here's an apple or a banana or an entire feast for all your civilization the wizards basically meant that fabulous had turned into a utopia the the whole entire realm went over and instantly overnight from uh, eternal conflict to just uh, prosperity and happiness mm -hmm. and all was good and as the years trundled on and this utopia existed boredom set in <laughs> <laughs> the, the people had everything they wanted they were happy but the wizards who were essentially now left with nothing to do mm -hmm would drink and they would meet at the annual wizard uh, congregation once a year they would get together and talk about wizarding stuff and over the years they started to become more and more unruly and they would debate and fight amongst themselves and one of the most recurring most common debates that the wizards would have is throughout all those myriads of generations and millennia of war who were the toughest? Mm. What was the best race? Who was the best champion? Who was the best leader? Who was the best brawler? Who was the best? And they wanted to go back in time and find out. But the Council of Corrections was like, no, no, you can't do that. The Council of Corrections were like, you can't mess with time. You can't just go back and plop yourself into war and just do whatever you want. 
But what you can do is go back in time and bring the champions to now. Mm. And we could have the champions brawl and find out who the strongest would be. Mm -hmm. And thus, brawls began and became essentially like the football, the soccer, the entertainment for all of Fabulosa. Mm -hmm. And the super brawl is like the pinnacle of mm -hmm. that. So if you and I are wizards and we're kind of in the lower leagues, we can yeah. take part. We can have champions when they're a bit begraggled, when they're a bit yeah. old. But if we work our way up, and we get to the top and we fight through the arenas and we mm -hmm. become a really strong wizard, we get access to the Super Brawl and the champions when they were at their peak, uh -huh. when they were, and it's the Council of Corrections that manage all of this. They, mm -hmm. they basically say when you're allowed to take guys from, champions from, and, and kind of how that works. So what we end up with is us as players, yeah. playing as wizards, pulling together your dream fantasy pirate, mm -hmm. troll ravager, and dwarf warden mm -hmm. to battle in the arena. Yeah. and try and take it down. So we're going to have a whole realm of possibilities and I want to kind of go through some of the champions we have and some things that are going to be coming uh, as we kind of look at the development of the game. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So first guy we have up mm -hmm. is Dogrin. So Dogrin is our Warden of the North and if you can't caught the Weekender way back when when we visited you guys mm. and we talked a little bit about him, he's essentially a stalwart defender. He wants to defend his people, his homeland. He's empowered by the mountain and his wish, if he wishes, uh, wins the brawl, is to be sent back to his time and have his homeland and um, survive eternal mm -hmm. that's his dream as a champion yeah. in gameplay he's like a stalwart defender he holds positions he looks after and, and kind of and um, strategically locks down areas mm -hmm. of the arena very yeah. very traditional and really the artwork here this is johannes helgas and we got on board to do mm -hmm. this here we had many many different ideas and johannes really captured the liveliness and vibrancy that we find in all of our characters in the mm -hmm. game so we have uh dogrin to show him off of course this is our Seb Levine. This is an early 3D uh, print mm -hmm. uh, of the mini. So this is very much um, exactly what we hope to replicate with the plastic. You'll have the full scenic base and Dugan, exactly as you see him. I think Seb's done an unbelievable job on these. Yeah. Well, I mean, like it's, he's, the, his paint job definitely sets off the sculpt. Yep. But I love the sculpt with these these sort of crystals roll coming up out of him. That's you know? it. And he's empowered by his homeland. He's empowered by the mountain. He channels this kind of frost magic that allows him to call down blizzards mm -hmm. and control the battlefield and control the arena. Yeah, it's gorgeous. We've got a bunch more. We're going to keep rallying through some more of our champions to give people at home just a feel for the kind of characters we're going to have in the game. I've got the buttons, you remember. <laughs> so this is... I'm not going to help them. I know, I'm right? going to make so them remember. Good. So this is Gwen, the Gathering Storm. She mm. is really an uppity high elf snob, born into nobility thinks she's better than everyone else and to be honest she's majoritively she's quite right actually and <laughs> um, she would take out entire armies with her magic at mm -hmm. ease she's very much focused on destruction and decimation and is very fragile she has six health no defense so in the arena she can be taken out knocked out of combat quite easily mm -hmm. but she is just we, we had her dynamically floating and powered mm -hmm. her presence is she looks down and everyone I'm gonna grab her cards for a second because Ooh. I love some of her fluff text I'm gonna grab <laughs> okay there because I want I I want you to tell me who you think uh, she's talking to when she says, uh, okay. the battle was won the second I arrived. Now be a deer and stay down. <laughs> now, is she talking to her foes or her allies when she says that? It's... <laughs> You see, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking she might just be talking to one of her foes, you know, someone like uh, uh, Dugrin. Yeah, just you you're know, just, beneath me. No, just like, like you just you're a dwarf. Stay in the ground. That's where you belong. Oh, <laughs> uh, she says with fireball, she says, like all who came before you shall kneel. <laughs> you know, so she Gwen is very much uppity, kind of stuck up. Uh, she really likes to kind of uh, lord her mm -hmm. power over everybody. Yeah. Uh, we've then got Darren. She is Huntress of the Eastwood. She's kind of our Robin Hood mm -hmm. character. She's a, a champion of the people, very mobile. She dodges rounds and uses traps to her advantage, using it to control the arena, push her opponents into traps, triggering them. And whenever she levels up, if she's able to uh, knock out an opponent's champion, she can then use those traps even more to benefit her defense. So she's yeah. really nimble, agile, likes to hit and run. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, let me give you over, it painted yeah. there. So her cards are very much focused on um, mobility and challenging. Like I love, again, her fluff. She says, give it your best. So when I beat you, there's no excuses. <laughs> um, or you should run now 
I'll give you a head start. You know, <laughs> she's a little cocky. She's a little, you know, not not so much um, nobility and upper self, but more she doesn't like people who kind of have power. She'd rather, she's the fighter for the little man. See, I don't know. I mean, like you get some people, they just don't like people. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's <laughs> a- absolutely fair. I'll carry through the rest of the core champions and then we'll chat a little bit about their cards and how the yeah, game yeah, works. Yeah, sure. Uh, this is Goldar. Goldar is absolutely uh, my favorite champion at the minute, uh, both in playstyle and also in lore. Goldar sealed the boat, the Grave Robber. Uh, Goldar is basically a scourge of the several seas. We don't quite know how many, but we know it's several. And the idea is that he just wants to have all the doubloons, all the gold, all the booty and treasure. His cards, of course, represent that. He says, get over here, you yellow-bellied landlubber. I will think you're finding that belongs to me now. <laughs> uh, there's this uh, one of my favorite ones, if I find it. Uh, legends say he once wrestled a great white shark just to get a single coin lodged in its teeth. Goldar is very much about getting the booty and mm-hmm. having the most wealth. And if he wins the brawl, if he's part of the team that wins the brawl, he wants to be put back in his time with unlimited wealth. He wants uh-huh. to go back. And essentially, he already has a name for himself. But if he yeah. didn't, if he didn't, he would just buy it. You know, yeah. he would just he would be able to procure the prestige yeah. through sheer doubloons alone. Yeah. Now, you see, I. I don't know why, but I just imagine this guy in the battlefield and his battle cry is quite simply, SHINY! Yeah. <laughs> he, he's an ogre, so probably that little deeper, a little, oh, you know, a little, he's, he's, uh, we wanted, this is the thing, we wanted to embrace the fantasy, mm-hmm. but we wanted to put our spin on it. Mm-hmm. So we were like, what kind of pirate have we not really seen before? A big, muscly, strong ogre pirate mm-hmm. who knocks you back, pulls you in, throws you around, yeah. weighs in, but also says me hearties and leads his fo- leads oh, his yeah. allies in battle. So he's the kind of the epitome of the, the big anchor and kind of, you imagine when he hops on the boat, it sinks in the water a few inches, you know? <laughs> so I, do they need to shift the ballast just for That's him? it, just for Goldar, right? And all his, <laughs> all his gold. Um, Next up, we have Kilgore the Ravager. Yes. Now, Kilgore is not your traditional troll. Your, your traditional under the bridge, I'm a little stupid, I eat Billy Goat kind of troll. Mm. He's more your, I go and I kill demons to steal their dark steel armor so I can vindicate and overrun the world. And whenever he had no one left to fight and he couldn't find any more foes, he turned on his own people and fought them as well. Kilgore is... a uh, basically melee machine he's all about being in your face grabbing you with a claw and smashing you with his maul he says i'm doom incarnate i have no equal he is the epitome of raw violence Mm. up close and really cannot and will not be stopped. He is no problem eating his foes. He mm. will. He will. He, he has an amazing card, which its name makes me giggle. His appetite for destruction. <laughs> I devour. I consume. I shall never be defeated. You play Kilgore mm. if you have like unsatiable need to just chump high elves <laughs> for days. Um, Kilgore is really a malief. I don't believe he has a single ranged attack, but what he does have is actually a throw, uh, which allows him to pick up. Actually, I'll post this over to you so you can kind of see it on camera. Yeah, yeah, sure. It'll let, a, let you pick up an ally, and we call it jump, but essentially what he's doing is he's picking them up and throwing them up to three spaces in the, dire- the direction that he wants. So he's able to kind of not just... He can't get in quickly himself, but if he mm. can't fight, someone else will fight for him. This reminds me of a, an old thing that you used to do in another game. It was called dwarf bowling. That's... Where you would pick someone up yeah. and... Or them. go to the Blood Bowl tree and picking up goblins and winging them or, or like yeah. or, or ends or whatever. Just hide. Yeah, there's a lot of fun. The trolls, trolls doing the goblins. Yeah. We then have Suzai. And Suzai is our Targaryen swordsman. He's, we, we call him the Jade Claw. Mm-hmm. He was actually a farmer, had a small family, didn't wish to fight at all, but his land and his, his uh, sovereign kind of called him uh, to, to battle and he answered the call. And it turned out he was pretty much the ultimate swords master. It's that the king actually gave him the jade swords that he wields to fight and protect their land. And his dream is purely to return home to his family Mm -hmm. and uh, embrace a peaceful Ah. life. That's what he just, he fights for equality Mm -hmm. and for fairness amongst his people. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember the clip from whenever Miss of Pandaria came out? Oh, yes. I remember it. The uh, human and the orc fighting. Yeah, Yeah. but it was the panda and it was the question, why do we fight? Yes. For whom and family? That's 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 what I imagine him to be like. That's the kind of feeling. He he is all about um, if you deal damage to him, he Mm. deals it back to you. He's all about the yin and yang and and that Mm. fairness. And we, yeah, we wanted to embody that with with Suzai. I I, I love the the Chinese style armor that he's rocking Mm -hmm. here. It's very, very cool. And then I think 
Is that a dao or what is that sword called? I'm not going to lie. I'm not even going to try and hazard the guess of the actual blade. I can't remember it I off the top of my head. I think a dao might be a straight blade. I'm not sure. I someone, can't remember. Someone in the comments can always keep us yeah, right. Please tell us. what What is this blade? <laughs> <laughs> now, we have actually, have a, over by yourself, I've given you a set of one of our first mm -hmm. um, prototype set of cards. So when you play the game, mm -hmm. talking about the game for a little bit now, um, you have three champions. Mm -hmm. And it's three champions versus three champions. Each champion brings with them six cards. Mm -hmm. So um, there's three cores of magic. The, mm -hmm. the blue, the red, and the yellow. So that's manipulation for blue, uh, red is destruction, and yellow is creation. Mm -hmm. So when you play, you have six cards, and they're a mix of those colors. So when you're taking actions on your turn, you'll be using those colors. This is one of our first kind of looks at what the artwork on the card looks like. So this is Suzai. So he's all about being mobile, pouncing, striking. He has no problem challenging someone to kind of hand hand to hand one on one combat, he can also channel and focus not only himself but your your allied champions to lead your team. He doesn't mind using the the jade swords to kind of um, inflict you know, hit, and he's very much about countering enemies. Whenever you hit him, he hits back, and yeah. just as hard as you hit him. Yeah. So this gives you a feel that we want all the characters, not just their cards, to feel right, but also the art on them mm -hmm. and their play style. So whenever you say, "I'm going to play with these three champions this game," or "Do you know, I'm going to change that and play with three different champions next game." Yeah. It should feel different every time. Mm -hmm. That 18 card deck you make out of six, six and six cards that you shuffle together to play the game um, will change with just a single champion. And that will really mean your options and what combos and stuff you can do will be different every time you play. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of other champions Ooh. I want to show now. So this is, again, not quite sure exactly when you everyone at home is getting to see this, but we'll uh, show them here now. This is Colel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is, I'm, I'm sorry, so yeah. cute. She is our gnome Camilla Raptor rider. She is a scout. She's the jungle typhoon, and she's kind of the the nemesis of the moon touched, um, who are a race that were plaguing her forest, that was hunting her people. She would ride out on her Camilla Raptor to basically scout around and get lots of information and bring it back to her people so mm -hmm. they could launch ambushes. She's all about information. I'll give you. I'll let you have a little nosy at her cards. Okay. Uh, well, there, there is her her card. You can see it up close. Um, okay. So she's all. You know, now we're moving. Let's get that one. And come on, girl, let's show them what we can so, do. It health and leveled up, she gets minus, minus two defense on her attack. So whenever she ah. attacks someone, once she's leveled up, she can reduce their defense by That's two. Pretty good. Yeah, All right, she, give me some cards. She finds the weak spot. So this is a great one. For example, poison dart. It has the poison effect and has the lovely fluff text. Go to sleep, you big dummy. Um, she can move and then she can do a range three attack that inflicts up to two strength, a mm -hmm. two strength attack. But poison means if it's if the attack is not defended, mm -hmm. she'll take uh, damage um, doubled. Ah. That's currently the way it's been placed, but much of this is subject to change as we balance the game, make mm -hmm. it feel really good. Her Camilla Raptor is like all about being mo mobile as well. So she can, before the attack, jump, then quickly do a strength two attack at someone adjacent to her, and then after the attack, she can jump away. So she's mm -hmm. hopping in, doing a close range attack, and then hopping, hopping back out again. Yeah, I quite like the text on this one. Now we're moving. Let's go. Or no, let's get that one. Yeah. <laughs> I've also got, she's got Tongue Lash, so the Camellia mm -hmm. Raptor itself can attack. This, the fluff text in this is quite nice as well. Yeah. Um, so she's basically telling Topak to go and fetch and calling her a clever girl. <laughs> <laughs> we don't mind the references. So she's actually going to allow you to do a, a Tongue Lash to reach out and pull an opponent oh. two spaces towards you on the battlefield, which oh. you can then uh, use to obviously take someone out of permission, uh, yeah. position and stun them, which means they'll lose cards from their hand. Mm -hmm. So she's really good at manipulating the battlefield and kind of looking ahead. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I've got another couple more ch new champions. This is Achet. Akhet is the light of creation. He is our phoenix, who is essentially a, a support character who can both heal. Mm -hmm. um, he can also fly around the battlefield carrying both allies and enemies and moving them into mm -hmm. different positions, um, which means you can lift up enemies and drop them onto traps, or you can lift up allies and get them out of danger. His level up side is when he goes a little bit more um, in rage, and it gives him the ability to discard destruction cards from his hand mm -hmm. and increase the strength of his attack. So you can either play him as a support character I'll show. I'll give you another example of his support. We have Healing Tears. Mm -hmm. And Healing Tears is an ability which essentially lets you heal himself, or you can discard cards from your hand to actually use that heal on your allies instead. So he can actually keep people alive, he can renew them, he can keep them involved mm -hmm. in the fight, or you can take him down the route of being more aggressive, try and get him to get the, the, the knockout blow on someone, mm -hmm. level him up, and then go more hard-hitting attacks. Ah, I see. 
So this is just showing you, when you think about the champions we've talked about so far, we have ranged magic damage dealers, we have mobile hunters, we have strong sturdy guys like mm -hmm. Dugrin, we have big melee brawlers, we have the pirate, the Goldar is just a big chunk of meat bashing people around. Yeah. We have light scouts, now we have the flying aquette. Mm -hmm. These are all going to give you really unique styles of play because it is completely faction free. You just pick whatever three champions you want, hop into the arena to complete mm -hmm. the challenges and go for the knockouts. Yeah. I have to say, I adore the sculpt. Yes. With, with the, the tail feathers holding them up yeah. in flight and just the burning sword. A lot of times whenever you see a sword that's on fire, it's just a sword that's on fire. Yeah. It actually looks like molten rock that's and if it's it. breaking apart in that sculpt. Exactly. Gorgeous. You nailed it. And that's exactly what we wanted to go for, that it's formed in the flame of his people. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Akhet's whole thing is that he wants to reignite the flame of his people and bring them back to the prosperity they had before, essentially. Mm -hmm. I've one more little one to show you. Yeah, this again. is the one I've been curious about. So yes. you can kind of see of my favourite for the last. I did. This is Wrath. Wrath is the stalker beneath. And yes, if you go all the way back to the, the Weekender segment we shot with you, he is indeed essentially our mole assassin mm -hmm. and is actually a subordinate to Kilgore. Oh, really? He actually worked with Kilgore to supply him with information and to take out key targets that Kilgore couldn't get to. He is very, very much about waiting for your moment um, to, to, to pounce. Um, so and he, he gains poison when he levels up. Yes, all of his attacks become nice. poisonous if you're able to get him leveled up. Love so, the artwork. So again, we've played a couple of games, so Justin's able to look at the cards and say, well, that keyword or that, that little skill, that could be really cool. Yeah, that could be um, fun. So not to explain, he can borrow in, he can kind of dash in mm -hmm. underground and appear right beside enemies and, and get where he wants to. So he has to, after the attack, he can, he does a range attack first, does a two to three range attack. Mm -hmm. Then after that, he dives, does his dash to directly towards the target, ignoring enemies and traps. So he pops up mm -hmm. right beside them. And then he can do the likes of double dealing, which is a way where he can basically um, at least one card but do it twice so he can attack for a strength of two not once but twice off the back of one card to try and and deal with yeah. opponents Lord Kilgore rewards his best assassins greatly. You shall make a fine trophy. This is it. This is this is Wrath through and through. I'll show one last one for him just again this is something that's quite unique to him and it's a good moment to talk about this there are many different types of cards in the game. There are attacks, there are uh, skills, and there are reactions. And this is an attack that belongs to Wrath that actually says that reactions cannot be played ah. against this. So if you've got your opponent in a weak spot, but you think they might be able to play a reaction card that would mm -hmm. save them, yeah. you can instead play Wrath's attack, which will take them down. So, See, I would love to play this guy with Suzai. I bet you would. Yes. I'm, I'm all of a sudden, I'm starting to not just look at the character itself, but the synergies between them and what I want to put together. And that's what we want. So I, I'll show reaction card this is Gwen's reaction and uh -huh. um, she basically reveals an arcane shield to protect either herself or any of her allies so she gives you two defense mm -hmm. so if you were being attacked at strength three this of a sudden would give you two defense on top of any defense you have already thus negating some of that damage but if the attacker is not adjacent because this is an arcane shield if they're doing a ranged attack you actually make that a plus four defense Ooh. so if you declare an attack against me I yeah. say, I'm going to react and I'm going to put up a shield. Let's see what your attack does now. That's where Wrath's ability to ignore those reactions yeah. and be a sneaky stalker yeah, yeah. gives him that added edge. But that's yeah. a thing that's Wrath's got that other champions don't. So do yeah. you take him? Do you not? I, I, I kind of like the look of him. I'm seeing some, some good utility in him. Yeah. And then uh, I'm loving the quotes. Yeah. Silly creature. People always look up when they hear a noise. They're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they should be looking down. Um, so this will give, hopefully, everyone a bit of a feel for the way we want to develop the game. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, we've looked at nine different champions. They're all going to be very fantastical. Mm -hmm. They're all going to have cards that really focus on how we think they should play and how they feel. And there's going to be lore and synergy that's going to tie them together and give you a nice feeling for the world of Fabulosa and mm -hmm. kind of what it can become. So if you're a wizard and you want to pick your three favorite ones, that's cool. But if you want to pick three that are very strategic and kind of synergize well together, that's also an mm -hmm. option. Um, so chatting about, oh, a little bit of art actually before <laughs> the game. We worked with Bayard Wu, who mm -hmm. did our, our cover uh, for Joan of Arc and a bunch of other pieces of art for us over the years. He has a beautiful years. style. He is, his style is outstanding. So we wanted to get a few beautiful pieces just to show the likes of the world. So this is inside the arena. This is an early shot of Dugrin looking on yeah. as Suzar and Gwen go at it, hammer and tong. And this is showing one of the statues that is represented in the arena that you have to try and fight over adjacency and control mm -hmm. of these to get victory points. It's just yeah. beautiful but I mean like, you, you can just imagine him sitting there going well time to make the modern bread that's <laughs> he's just he's just ready to go yeah. and all the champions are that's really he's just waiting for the moment that the wizard unleashes him to go yeah. and do your thing yeah 
We've also got some art of Suzai. So we're starting oh, to yes. look at you know the homelands, where these champions come from, mm. when they get sent back to their homelands, what might happen. With the organized play, we really want to look at doing beautiful uh, neoprene mats and tokens and lovely mm. prizes. We want this game to feel and look gorgeous when you're mm -hmm. playing it and um, no matter if you're doing it at home or if you're doing it for fun at the store or if you're doing it competitively mm -hmm. at some of the events that we hope to run um next year when this hits retail mm -hmm. uh, and this yeah this is just gorgeous, gorgeous Suzar. here's another oh, little yes. shot yes this is a full-on action scene this was to get a bit of a feel for darren kilgore goldar and just give you uh, uh, the core box these are the kind of the six kind of core champions that we started developing the game with mm -hmm. um and we wanted to really show just how much vibrancy that the game really mm -hmm. brings across Whenever you're getting into it but there's there's a real cinematic nature to whenever you actually get into the game yeah. whenever you're playing those three cards in turn mm -hmm. i know that doesn't sound like a lot to play in a yeah. turn but you can make some pretty hefty tactical moves with yeah. that in this game yeah and we're going to talk about a little bit more about the game and kind of how it works and plus we're, we're going to do a proper video as well oh, where yeah. we show the setup and how a round breaks down as yeah, well so course. you can get all of that and see how the real mechanics work mm -hmm. Um, so talking about mechanics, so this is the board, um, which we have in front of us, we can see here. So maybe we'll kind of come to the real life one. Here we go. So on the board, talking through it a little bit, I'll move the guys around. We have at the start of the game, two deployment zones. We have a red deployment over here and a blue. Bear in mind, this is still very much prototyping at the moment. So we've still got a way we can improve this. We have three statues in the middle that will be obstructions that you cannot move through. Mm -hmm. And then around that, we have some areas of control for the yellow creation, the red destruction and the blue manipulation. And these are very relevant for the challenge track. Mm -hmm. So you have a challenge deck. These, this challenge deck is known to the opponents. You know all the different cards that are in here, but at the start of each game, you will place the challenge deck on the track mm -hmm. and you will reveal two challenges that will give you objectives and your opponent to yep. fight over. Yep. So for example, control the creation area or have a champion in each deployment. Mm -hmm. So this is going to give you things to try. So to control an area, I would simply need to have more champions in it than you. So either one to nothing or indeed two to nothing. For example, mm -hmm. if it was one champion of each of ours, then neither of us would control it. We'd be sharing the control yeah. in that space. If at the start of my turn, I do meet one of the challenge criteria. So in this case, at the start of my turn, if I did control the creation area, I get the number of victory points that are displayed on the board. So that mm -hmm. may be one, two, three. I think I have a better shot of the board. There we go. Yeah. So we can see just what that's looking like. Again, this is very much in testing. We're experimenting with different types of challenges. Mm -hmm. We're experimenting with the pacing. We want the length of the game really to feel that kind of 30 to 45 minute mark where yeah. you have enough chance to do a, a good number of rounds with good impactful turns, mm -hmm. but the game doesn't drag on too long. And what we find is there's usually a mix of knockouts and challenges that seal mm -hmm. the deal for a win. Yeah, that and with, with it being three aside, you're not so overburdened by yeah. thinking about stats and you know different abilities yeah, there's not you, too much to track exactly although i i have to say as the teams you've laid out here i don't think i would ever take this no you have all the armored versus all the non-armored so that's that could be interesting this is a great point so going i'll go back to the battlefield for a second mm -hmm. and talk a little bit about this one of the key elements of the game exactly as, uh, as uh, justin has mentioned is mm -hmm. um the arena and these areas these statues that, that block movement and the edges of the board that block movement mm -hmm. and the reason they're important is usually if you have a defensive character like like Dugrin. He has a defense of two, which means mm -hmm. attacking Dugrin, every attack you do on him, the strength of it's negated by two, yeah. essentially. However, if I bring Kilgore in mm -hmm. and have Kilgore beside him, and I play a card, so Kilgore attacks on Dugrin, and it pushes him into the wall and he's nowhere to go, or indeed, if I was to push him into a champion and he had nowhere to go, each element of push mm -hmm. will do damage straight yeah. through the defense. Yeah, so there are ways around it. So pushing people, pulling people, forcing mm -hmm. them. Kilgore actually has an action called Force where he does a range attack, leaps onto his target, pushes them out of the way and takes their spot. Oh. So he has ways of not only kind of moving you where he wants you and mm -hmm. pushing you against things to hurt you, but he can also come in and take your spot, which can mm -hmm. be crucial for controlling zones. Yeah. Uh, Kilgore is surprisingly brutal at times. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, like the the three here, the damage output I've seen from them is quite a lot higher than the more defensive guys as well, yeah. which is a, a, a different skew on it. So looking at these nine champions, it, it is not a perfectly even split, but you have some damage dealing, you have some utility, you have some support, you mm -hmm. have some um, more what we call displacement champions mm -hmm. that are more focused on pushing and pulling. Yeah. You can definitely whip out a killing team mm -hmm. uh, or that like, going for the knockouts. But important, it's really important to note that when you take someone out of the board, so say, for example, we did have Suzari take Dugrin out. Mm -hmm. You would get a victory point. So immediately you get one of your five victory points yep. for, so, for doing well, that. One of five, well done. Dugrin would go out, but he doesn't, he's not removed from the game. He's not killed. The wizards simply just say, okay, Dugrin, you've had your moment. We're going to whisk you back to your deployment. And Dugrin can basically just spend a movement point with a card or an action to move into any one of your deployment. And he's immediately back in again, mm -hmm. back to full health again and ready yeah. to go. Yeah. So... 
actually achieving five knockouts in a game is very difficult. You'd have to have a team very focused on it, and that's where the strategy will start to come yeah, in. Yeah, and you kind of have to have your opponent allowing you to get in on it because yep. there are reactions that just completely negate damage Absolutely. And stuff. They're, they're, every champion brings out a different style of reaction. Durgan's reactions hold him in place. Mm. Goldar's reactions intimidate and fear enemies. Mm. We saw Gwen's reaction putting up arcane shields, which is effective yeah. against ranged attacks. Different reactions see different champions mm. doing very different yeah, and Not every reaction is defensive. I mean, like... Uh, oh, uh, Darren's reaction. You can show Darren. Darren's reaction if you want. Yeah. So uh, Darren's reaction gives quickly. you a small defensive bonus, but yeah. then she ambushes the target that just attacked so it actually moves Darren right beside the attacker yeah. now this is important because it can be played on any champion so Darren will basically say okay after the attack no matter what which one of our champions were attacked I'll jump in to get between them and the attacker and, and my yeah. champion or to jump in to actually block you scoring one yeah. of the the challenges I'll position yourself to score a challenge yourself at the start yeah. of the turn and that's key exactly as you mentioned with with regards to the challenges mm -hmm. you have to be in position to score one of these at the start of your turn mm -hmm. which means you need to be strategizing ahead always so I'm going to position my guys mm -hmm. to hold these positions in a hope that you can't handle everything so the more threats and the more things i can make you try and deal with mm -hmm. the more likely i'm going to be that i can actually achieve the victory points mm -hmm. So the game itself is really based around just three actions. I take three actions, which are the three colours, the red, the blue, I'll go back to here, here we go. Yep. The the red, the blue, and the yellow, so the destruction, uh, manipulation, and creation. Yes, yes. You can play three cards, or if you really wanted, you could use, you've got one over there, one of your standard actions. Mm. So even if you don't have a card, oh, flipper upside down, there we go. Even if you don't have a card you want to play, or if you have just a preferred choice, you can do one of these standard actions instead, which can let you move and plan, which prepares a card for your next turn. Mm -hmm. You can move and heal, you can move and deal a damage straight through defense of an opponent or you can even sprint to get two spaces of essentially free movement mm. but this will eat up one of your actions meaning you're not playing a card yeah all the standard actions feel generally weaker than playing a card i, I don't know don't overlook that but this is it they can seal games keeping a card that you know you really want for next turn yeah, it's or like a reaction you're trying to keep yeah, it in in back pocket perfect Go for it. um or just healing one yeah. um it can literally change a game yeah. the standard action even just the the red one if you want a Sneak pip, a damage pip in. someone. Yep. Pip someone for the last point and go, good night. Yeah. And this yeah, is it because could agree. high high uh high defense champions like uh, Dugman with two goal uh, one two defense, Goldar with one defense, that little chip away to just get a damage they can make or break it. Yeah. Um so yeah, this the whole game is based around kind of just alternating three actions, three actions each, and moving the challenge track along and a race to five victory points. Yeah. Really, really straightforward. Uh, I'm just thinking what other images I have. Yeah, some beautiful oh. renders. So this just to kind of show off in a little bit more detail the quality we're after. So these are these are obviously 3D renders at the moment, but they will be full plastic. They mm -hmm. will come with the bases as you see them, and they will all come completely pre-assembled, mm -hmm. ready to go. And um, whether you buy the core set, whether you buy an individual champion, or even a little set of three champions, yeah. we're going to have kind of various different ways that you can kind of broaden your range of potential options. Yeah. Um, and every champion comes with their cards. Now, there's no deck building in, in the game. Mm -hmm. So you're not mixing and matching cards. Yeah. All you're doing is picking the champions mm -hmm. and taking their six cards and putting them together. Yeah. So when Whenever you buy a champion, you get everything you need. You yeah. don't have to sort of say, "Oh, I need Goldar because he has yeah, a so card." You can do like a very course. much a slow grow kind of thing. Yeah, you, you can want. go at your pace. You can pick the ones that are strategically your style. You can just pick the ones you like the look of and that are fun to you. And um, we don't we don't want to force people to buy or oh, have to buy this champion because they have yeah. a card that I want for this. Yeah. That's not something we really want to yeah. do. Well, one of the other things, whenever we did the the weekender segment, uh, I know it's not finalized now, but you mentioned like a champion was going to be ten quid. Yes, that's... that is perfect for a youngster coming in with yeah. their pocket money to the local game yeah. store it's just like um i got my pocket money i want that one yeah i mean for us we'd like the barrier to entry to be relatively low to the game and yep. um, because this is hopefully going to be a hobby that people can get involved with they can paint they can enjoy the minis they can enjoy mixing and matching and trying different champions and then if they want to they can dive into the organized play and we have some plans for that and um, honestly i'm just waiting for someone to go nuts and actually do the arena yeah. as a full 3d board well, well <laughs> like that, that that's, that's the yeah, dream we're some way off now but i'm excited for it that's it's going to happen, actually. Yeah, dream, yeah, we're mythic. It's going to happen. Yeah, of course. Um, I'll talk a little bit about organized play for a second mm -hmm. because if you are interested in that more meta, mm -hmm. that more kind of um, long-term evolution of the game, um, we are going to have events that you can get involved with and an extra little kind of set of rules that change the game slightly for competitive mm -hmm. players. So you always battle with three. So on the board, we have we have six champions. If I was playing at an event, though, what I would do is I would actually bring with me five champions. Yeah. So I would bring my five to my store 
to take part in my event. So these are the five that I bring. I'll bring who's out of shot there. Go ahead and we'll bring you down the bottom. There you go, my dear. So here are my five champions. You would bring your five champions yep. as well. Let's imagine I have yeah, five. Imagine you have five. And what we would do is do a little mini draft where mm. essentially I would pick one of mine to keep All right. and uh, ban, you know, pick one of yours or ban one of your. You would ban one of mine, uh, for example. Let's ban Goldar. So you would say, I don't want to play against Goldar. Yeah. You would pick one of your champions to play with. Yeah. So I would pick Darren. Darren, for example. I would then ban one of yours. I would then pick one of my own. So what we have is I come with five, mm -hmm. but through a little mini draft where we pick and ban each other's champions. So I'm picking ones for me and banning ones yeah. from you. You're picking ones for yourself and banning ones for me. We end up with a three yeah. uh, champion setup, which means I take their six cards, six cards, six cards, make an 18 card deck. Mm -hmm. But if I play multiple times that evening or multiple times at that event yeah. or that week, Weekend, you'll play with different combinations each time yeah. which means the five you bring have to be able to work together and you have to have an understanding of how all their cards could potentially work see i might try the tactic of actually just if i know there's a character that my local folks really yep. hate playing against bring him but have my my a team just sitting beside yeah. the one that people really hate, just hoping they'll ban him. Please, yeah, target target the one I kind of don't really want to play, but I know you hate them. Yeah, yeah like if I know you hate Goldar, I'm like, of course I'm going to put Goldar in there because yeah. that means you're going to target him. Yeah. So yeah, you'll get a little bit of that. Um, there's, a, there's a nice little bit of tactical choice yeah. and you know, head games with your opponent, which is yes. always fun. And this thing, if the meta will evolve with it as well. Mm -hmm. So for example, if one champion starts becoming really popular and everyone's taking them, then they're probably going to be a targeted ban first. Mm -hmm. probably, so then you'll start to think, well, what can counter that? And yeah. it will evolve my scene. It's, you know, it's the, the miniature <coughs> arm areas that you always get yep it's, it's, it's common and we, we fully expect that mm-hmm we also, I mentioned briefly earlier, the Council of Corrections. Mm -hmm. um, so we do expect, although this is still, again, very, very in the early stages, but we do expect that we'll have kind of some kind of um, rotation or evolution of the game where, mm -hmm. you know, every set of six months or 12 months or so, we'll kind of say, okay, so this is the current pool of champions mm -hmm. that are welcome in, in competitive play. Yeah. Uh, and that's because, you know, we're going way past six or nine. We're mm -hmm. really thinking 20, 24, 30. Yeah. We're thinking large numbers of potential combinations. Yeah. Now, here's one for you. Have you actually, now it's maybe something to consider, but yep. let's say you discover one of the heroes is just yep. absolutely fantastic in competitive play. Could happen, yep. You could actually have a decree from the Council of Corrections that yep. if you're taking him in your five, mm -hmm. you are minus X amount of victory points, or you maybe yeah, need I mean, an extra point to win a game if you're using him. Yeah, there's, diff there's different things we can do, and, mm -hmm. and a lot of that balancing is going to come over time. And this is one yeah. of the reasons that we're talking about this very early, yeah. um, because obviously we're looking at Q1 2020 for this yeah, hitting, yeah. hitting retail, and then pre-ordered or campaigns or things ahead of that. And the reason we're talking about it so early is because all of that thing, we, we have to really focus on developing more. We want mm -hmm. to really fine-tune the engine for this game because it's going to be a long-term uh, yeah. support for us and yeah. um, so yes there are things we can do with um, kits with erratas if we really need mm -hmm. to with new cards with with tweaks we could even say do you know what? this champion is not eligible for organized play for this season because they're too strong yeah. or we could even say these two champions can't be taken on the same team together because they just yeah. don't get on yeah there's again, that yeah. can just be decreased from the council of corrections yeah. so you can actually build the meta and actually tame yeah. it down so yeah. that it's not just Oh God! Everybody's running the exact same yeah. thing. Yeah, there's. I mean, I, I'm incredibly familiar with the likes of uh, X Wing and Netrunner. We have guys in the team who are very, very familiar with the likes mm -hmm. of Guild Ball and Warhammer Underworlds. You know, all these very popular games. Yep. We love the guys at Corvus Belly and Aristea. Of course. You know, there's many different ways you can balance and tweak these things. So these are all options we're going to be keeping very open. Yeah. Well, it's it's, it's one of those things. The the team you have at Mythic, the talent pool that you have in there. Yes. You know, yeah. your pool of champions, as it were. Yeah there's such a great mix of different skill sets and experiences yeah. in there that you can actually throw into games yeah. like this. I mean, we're so lucky having Jack Thornton as like mm -hmm. our lead game developer, like who, who runs a lot of our teams because he has decades of experience in the industry mm -hmm. and has developed entire systems for likes of Warhammer, mm -hmm. you know, so he knows his stuff. So we're we're very much um, working together to kind of make this as, as good as possible. And we yeah. have some of the, the, some very good Game of Thrones players as well on the development team who, you know, are used to a competitive environment. Oh, yeah. Um, so that being said, if you want to play, we're hoping, I'm going to say this now, it's very early, but touch wood, I'd love that what you see here, so six champions, the boar, the chantry, all the tokens, everything mm -hmm. you need to play, unpainted, I'm afraid, though. Um, not set painted. We're really aiming for an, like an MSRP of around the kind of 30, 35 pound kind of mark. So hopefully, Serious? that's, a, yeah, that's, that's Pretty damned accessible. A, a two-player core set will kind of get you started with yeah, six yeah. champions kind of out of the box. And then you'll have little sets of individual or kind of sets of three champions that are yeah, kind yeah. of themed together so you can expand the way the way you want to. So mm -hmm. if you do just want to play it at home for fun, if you want to you know, get your tactical itch scratched, it's definitely got that mm -hmm. feeling. Um, but for us, we're definitely going to be saying, how can we make this a really intriguing tactical yeah. balance game 
for 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 years to come. Yeah, I think the the only added extra, and I'm sure you guys have probably already thought about mm -hmm. it, is I want this board in neoprene. Yep, neoprene mats is a thing. Plastic tokens and mm -hmm. 3D statues and terrain for mm -hmm. the board. Yeah, yeah. Um, I you know I'll tell you right now, I, I don't mind saying this. I want you know a first ever world champion mm -hmm. to get a wizard. Cumberbun, a hat maybe, maybe ah. maybe a staff or stave, yeah. maybe even a champion either designed to their style or maybe designed in their image. Ooh, like that could be fun. This this super fancy bro. This twenty nineteen such an exciting time for us in Mythic Games. We're doing lots of new things. We're doing games games that really traditionally you may not have thought are our style. Um, you know, these are something very different to games we've done before. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we're we're kind of innovating and, and, and attacking retail. Mm -hmm. You know, on hard. We want to keep doing amazing kickstarters. We want to keep doing amazing products. But we want to now bring games games that are going to start a hobby for people. Yeah. You see, the, the, the targeting of retail, I think, is a really great move on yeah. your part because one of the things that's going to do is it's going to build more community to it than online sales. Mm -hmm. sure. Because online sales, you see it, you buy it, you get it. Okay, I have it. It's in my house. Yeah. If you go down to your game club to buy mm -hmm. this yep. and someone sees you picking it up, they go, oh, I play that. Do you want a game? Yeah. That's, you know, that, and then yeah. you get that, that connection of people. That's what we would love. You know, th this is definitely a game that we want to say you've got half an hour, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's very quick to set up. You can just sit down and bash out a game mm -hmm. during a lunch break or, or if you're going down to your friendly local game store in an evening between like seven and 10, you can get like three or four yeah, yeah. rounds of this in and, and play a little mini event. Oh, yes. that's, that's what we would love. Um, so yeah, I mean, I have a couple more pictures of, of renders. We'll kind of just, just gives you a little bit more um, of a closer look at some of the minis that I don't have. So, there's Wrath. Wrath. Yeah. I love the look of Wrath. Definitely one I'm going to add. Um, Wrath, yeah. Wrath is one that I actually adore because we, you know, I don't mind saying this. You know, we, we initially were like, we need an assassin. We need someone who's all poison and creepy. Yeah. But we don't just want a skaven. We don't just yeah, want, you don't a want a rat. rat. And we were joking and throwing about ideas. Like we were kind of chatting. And Mole kind of came to the top and we were like, Mole, can we? We can make that yeah, kind of cool. That's really nice. And we started experimenting. Our artists went away and kind of did some contents for us. And we're like, oh, we're on this. And this is really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. And when I think for me, it's when we did the hands, because mm. those are like beady little eyes, but then they yeah. have those big, big, big hands. hands. Yeah. And when we did the hands with the kind of the gauntlets and um, protective armor, I was like, that's so, epic. Because I yeah. can just envision him coming under and just jumping up and getting someone. Yeah, it, yeah for me, it was perfect. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, what we're going to do is we're going to sit down with you guys. We're going to show mm. how um, the game works. How it sets up. We're yeah. going to talk through how a round breaks down mm -hmm. and how, how exactly you play, and then we're going to have some games. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. The, key, the key thing for me is that this has got a, a long life in it. So if mm -hmm. you think this is the kind of game you can uh, get involved with, come and join the Mythic Games Facebook page or come and join the Super Fancy Brawl Facebook page because mm -hmm. we're going to start, you know, playtesting this. We're going to start really involving the community. We're going to really make something here that I think will be just vibrant and fun. Mm -hmm. You know, my dream, my personal dream is to have like a, a huge event that likes the UK Games Expo and yeah, the likes yeah. of Gen Con and the likes of Paris Ludique. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these, these big conventions where we can go and say, right, we've got like 128 people that are going to find out who is the most fantastic champion yeah, yeah, of all yeah. time, you know, and we're, and we're going to do this. That's, that's where I'd love to see this game go. Uh, now I just imagine Leo on a stage announcing it going, and the winner of the uh, Staff of Ultimate Power is oh. that guy. Yeah, Staff of Ultimate Power, right? That's what Cumberbun of Ultimate Girth and the Staff <laughs> of Ultimate Power. Like, that's, staff that's, of Ultimate Reach. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that's perfect. <laughs> So yeah, so we're, I'd love to hear people's thoughts. If you yeah, have, yeah. you know, if you have comments and you have ideas for us, please give them. We've got uh, many months ahead for mm -hmm. this one. Um, in 2019, we will have some news on this where we start talking about how you can get your hands on it uh, a little early or, or kind of get a pre-order early. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the retail release will see this hit stores uh, with force. Awesome. All right. Well, everybody, tell you what. Get your comments in below. Tell us what do you think of this. Are you excited for the idea of Mythic Games doing a really cool fantasy brawler style game? <laughs> we'll move on. We'll see you again soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.